Hi everyone, it's Mike again with another MIDI project for you. Today I'm going to show you how to build a MIDI drawbar organ sound generator based on the classic sounds of the Hammond B3 organ. And this is what it looks like. My design is based on the brilliant Prop B3 organ project of Hubert Bollig. Sorry about the pronunciation. He has very kindly given me his permission to use his creation in this project. As usual, I'll post links below to the schematics, code, and other useful stuff as well as a link to Hubert's original design. I always like to start off with a demo so you can get a good idea of what the project is all about before you decide whether it's worth watching the rest of the video. And I hope you will. Hubert's original design is the sound generator section which produces the full range of sounds and features of a Hammond B3 tone wheel organ. It features 79 free running tone wheels giving a 61 note 5 octave range with 16 note polyphony. There are 9 fully adjustable draw bars, key click simulation, 4 foot or 2 and 2 thirds foot percussion on first note, vibrato or chorus, reverb, adjustable distortion, and a fantastic Leslie simulator with slow and fast speed. With the speed building up and slowing down like the real thing, the horn speeds up and slows down more quickly than the rotor, which is a great feature. Also, there is an adjustable rotor horn balance. In fact, it has all the features you'd expect to find on a full-size Hammond tone wheel organ for a fraction of the cost. The sound generator section accepts MIDI note on-off messages 36 to 96, as well as control messages to adjust all the features I've already mentioned. I've added a controller with a few essential buttons and display to make it easier to manage all the control parameters. I'll show you a bit later how we do that. On the back there's a socket for 7 to 12 volt DC input, on off switch, MIDI input socket and a mono audio output socket. This is what it looks like inside. The prototype is on stripboard, but I think it would be worthwhile designing a PCB for this project. The sound generator is here and uses a prop micro to do all the heavy lifting, otherwise known as a parallax propeller P8X32A, which is an 8 core 32 bit micro running at 80 megahertz. The prop has serious memory limitations, but more than makes up for it with computing power. An I2S output from the prop drives a stereo 16-bit DAC, a TDA 1543. Only one channel is used for mono output, which then goes to a dual op-amp, an LM358, for final conditioning before going to the line output here. Just a quick side note, Hubert's original design shows two versions. One uses the TDA1543 DAC, which is out of production now, but NOS versions are readily available on eBay or directly from China at very reasonable cost. 
Also, it comes in an 8-pin DIL package, which is why I decided to use it. And the other uses a WM8727 DAC, which is still in production, but is a surface mount device. Hubert shows how to use both devices and supplies the relevant code to program the propeller chip. Just be careful. If you use a TDA1543 as I have, make sure it has no suffix letter. The TDA1543A uses the Japanese protocol of data transfer and will not work. And Hubert mentions in his notes that the S version doesn't work either. Since I started making this video, I ordered some TDA1543s from China and they arrived very promptly in less than 10 days. But although the eBay ad pictured Philips chips, what arrived were NXP chips. I tried them out and they didn't work. They produced white noise just like the TDA1543A chip, which looks like, although they are marked correctly, they appear to be Japanese format and not I2S. So be careful. I've now found some WM8727s which come mounted on a little 8-pin DIL adapter. Maybe I'll have more luck with those. This is a 32K EEPROM which loads the program into the prop on boot up. Over here is the controller section, a PIC16F1829, which does several things. It monitors the user control buttons, which change the sound generator parameters, and sends out control MIDI messages to the prop. Secondly, it drives a 20 character by 4 line LCD to display all the drawbar and control information. And finally, it controls switching between the control messages being generated internally and the keyboard note messages coming in through this optocoupler, a 6N139. These are the voltage regulators for the 5 and 3.3 volt supplies and you may have noticed a blank space over here. This is where the tactile switches have been soldered on the other side of the strip board. I just want to quickly show you the first version I started building some time ago, which uses sliders, pots and buttons to send the MIDI control messages to the sound generator. This worked very well, but I was put off by all the wiring I'd have to do, so the project was postponed for a while until I came up with the simpler design I have now. Now let's have a look at the controls and display. I went with a 20 by 4 display because one, it can show all the information you need in one go and two, character LCDs have come right down in price. This one was less than five pounds on eBay, including postage. The buttons consist of left and right, up and down or increase decrease, the mode button switches between drawbar level adjust and adjustment of the other parameters like volume, reverb, vibrato, etc. There are two separate buttons here for Leslie on off and fast slow, which you need to get to quickly while you're playing. Although Hubert chose the Leslie speed control messages to be the same as the modulation wheel so you can change the speed on any standard MIDI keyboard with the mod wheel. The last control on its own over here is an optional just-in-case button to reboot the prop chip in case of mixed MIDI messages causing notes to stay on which can happen very occasionally if the control messages generated by the PIC micro clash with the incoming note messages. This is optional because the same result can be achieved by switching the power on and off. On power up the cursor is at the P0 position which is a range of preset sound adjustments from 0 to 9. Any sound you adjust the controls to can be saved to these presets and stored on the PIC's internal EEPROM 
for later use every time you switch on. Save SV is just above P0 here and you navigate to these different positions with the left and right buttons. The up down buttons increase or decrease a value or activate the chosen command such as save. So pressing the right button moves the cursor from P0 to VO which is overall volume. Then to BA balance to DI distortion, RV reverb, VB vibrato chorus, PR percussion, it jumps across layers to zero which when activated zeroes the nine drawbar levels in one go which I found is quite handy. Finally one more press and it jumps back to SV and so on. Of course Pressing the left button moves the cursor around the other way. As I mentioned before, the Leslie on off and speed are changed with these two separate buttons. Pressing the on off button will indicate zero for off and F or S for on, depending on where the fast slow button was last set. If you now press the mode button, the cursor jumps to the first drawbar position, the 16 foot drawbar, and you can change the level from 0 to 9 with the up down buttons. Pressing the left or right buttons moves the cursor to the next drawbar position and so on. Pressing mode again will move the cursor back to the P0 position. This video has ended up being much longer than I thought so I'm posting it in two parts. In part two I'll show you the controls in more detail and we'll have a look at the schematics and technical details.